Both watercolor and acrylic paint have their pros and cons, so I'm going to be taking my over 10 years of experience as an artist and telling you what I think the best paint is to get started with. Welcome to Celebration State, where we help Christian creatives to grow in their creativity and in their love for God. Some of you are at the very beginning of your creative journey when it comes to the visual arts, and so I wanted to make this video and tell you what I think is the best paint to get started with when you're a beginner. For both kinds of paint, we're gonna be looking at the pros, the cons, and then also the kind of in-between area where it could be good or bad, depending on what you make of it. When I was in high school, that was the first time I ever used acrylic paint and I fell in love with it. So I'm about to tell you all the pros for acrylic paint that I found during that time. It is such a versatile medium. You can paint on multiple different kinds of surfaces. It's also very forgiving. You can cover over your mistakes that you've made with just more paint after it dries. You can also use it to build up texture on your painting. It's also a strong kind of a paint. It's not something that's fragile. It holds up pretty well over time. For the cons for acrylic, it's not very expensive, but it's also not the cheapest medium that's out there. And so it will take a little bit of an investment to get started. It also can be messy and stain things. It is also difficult to blend. That is the hardest thing with acrylic and something that if you decide to focus on this medium, you're gonna need to figure out how to overcome. And I recommend watching other people do it. I recommend looking up videos on how to do that if that's your plan to do acrylic. Because, and this is that in-between area I was talking about, Acrylic is difficult to blend because it dries quickly. Now this can be really good, especially if you're doing something like live painting, and if you need to transport the painting somewhere and you wanna make sure everything's dry, it will dry in a pretty quick amount of time if you don't add too much water to it, or also a medium that would make it dry slower. But because it does dry fast on its own, it makes it more difficult to blend. Like this video if you're getting some valuable information, it really helps the channel out. When I got into college, I was asked to illustrate a children's book and I was so excited and so I did all this research on illustrations and found that many illustrators use watercolor and so I began to use watercolors too then. So for the pros for watercolor, it is easier to blend with. Definitely easier to blend with than acrylic. Another pro for watercolor is that it is very inexpensive. The tubes of paint, they go so far, they last so long because all that you're using is a little dab of color and then you're diluting it with water. And that watery color is what you're using to paint with. It's also not that messy as a medium because it is water soluble. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had a watercolor stain that stayed because I never have, it's always just washed off. Now one of the reasons that watercolor is so inexpensive besides the paint tubes that just seem to go and go forever is that you're painting on paper. You're not painting on canvas for the most part. There is something that you can use called watercolor ground which will allow you to paint on multiple different surfaces. But for the most part, you're gonna be painting on paper, and that is much less expensive than canvas, typically. For the cons list for watercolor, for the most part, watercolor is a more fragile medium than acrylic. You want to be planning with the end in mind that this is probably going to be behind glass to keep it safe. You're gonna be putting it in a frame, whereas with acrylic, you may not need to even use a frame at all. And the other thing is that for the most part, you're gonna be painting on flat surfaces. So because watercolor is so very watery, if you were to hold your painting up while you paint it, like you see artists painting on easels, all of the color would drip down, which could be an interesting effect if you were going for that. But if you wanna have color that stays on the top of your painting, you're gonna be having it flat and taped down to whatever surface that you're using so that it doesn't the paper doesn't bow and stretch. And so that can be a limiting factor because it's not as mobile or movable as acrylic can be. One of the cons to keep in mind with watercolor as well is that you do have to save your white areas. And what I mean by that is anything that you're planning on being white or a big white highlight somewhere, that you're going to have to plan out ahead of time and either just not paint in that area, make sure that no color gets there, or seal it. And I'll have down below in the description some options for what you can use for sealing your paper if you are gonna use watercolor, as well as my favorite paints and papers and canvases and brushes and all that kind of stuff if you're getting started and you wanna know what I would use. 
The other thing to keep in mind is that watercolor is not a very forgiving medium. It's more similar to colored pencil than it is to painting acrylic in that once you get a color on of colored pencil, it's gonna be very difficult to remove it. It's very similar with watercolor. Once you get the color on, if you've made a mistake in an obvious place, it's gonna be difficult to fix that. Now you can try to remove the paint with water to an extent, or you could try and cover over it with a white gouache, but that is going to make it look a little bit different than regular watercolor, and it is just gonna require more effort than it would with acrylic, which would just involve painting over it and starting again. But because your materials are so inexpensive, it's not the end of the world if you end up needing to start over. And also for watercolor, it's important to know how the colors are going to mix and how they can get muddied. So for example, if you're doing green, you want to put yellow underneath the green for the most part to make it seem more vibrant and alive or otherwise it's going to be more muted. So learning those secrets can help you to get some really neat effects, but you have to kind of know them. Now in that in-between category for watercolor, I'll mention two things. It dries slower, which could be good or bad. It's good in that it helps it to blend better, but it could be bad if you need to transport it quickly. Pretty much with watercolor, you need to provide a bit of time for it to dry, and depending on how much water you've put on your paper for whatever sort of technique you're putting down, it may take quite a long time to dry, especially if you live in a humid state like I do now in Tennessee. The other sort of middle category thing is that you are in some sense at the mercy of the water. Watercolor is all about what does water do on a surface? How does it move? and understanding and learning to control that. Now there can be some really amazing techniques that people create with this, but that can be a little tricky. I will mention you don't have to paint in such a way that the colors get out of control. You can paint how I have typically painted more in the past, which is in a lot of washes, and that's a much more controlled way that you can paint with watercolor. And let me know in the comments, which medium sounds the most fun for you? And are you thinking of giving a try? If God wills, it's my intention to create instructional videos that teach you guys how to make both acrylic and watercolor paintings starting at the beginning and kind of simple instructional videos. So let me know if there are any videos that you'd like to see of things that you've always wanted to learn how to paint. So bearing all of this in mind, I actually do recommend watercolor as a great medium for people to get started in. I think if you will take the time to learn how to overcome the cons of watercolor, what's great about it is that it is so inexpensive that you can just kind of get going with it and you can create paintings fairly quickly with watercolor. And so I think that's a great way to go. But if you are really serious about getting started and you want a paint that's gonna be forgiving and really easy to work with, then acrylic could be a great way for you to start as well. Let me know in the comments if you are an experienced artist and you think I left out some really good advice. I would love to hear it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications if you wanna come on future creative adventures with us. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Be so blessed.